Well, good afternoon. Uh, I am not Professor Corno. Uh, you probably see me last time. I am uh, Luigi De Russis, one of the three teacher of this course. And uh, today we'll start speaking about Python uh, quite slowly. I hope if I am too slow, please uh, tell me that I can speed out uh, a little bit. We have one hour and a half today. The other one hour and a half, uh, you are free to go home or to stay here and discuss uh, for groups, for projects, whatever you want. This room is free and is for you for the next uh, hour and a half after this. So start, we start with programming for ambient intelligence in general, and then we go to Python to today and the next, week's, or next week on Thursday. So let's start, recap a little bit a uh, definition of ambient intelligence. You already see this on Monday. An ambient intelligence system is, just to be present, a digital environment so an environment with uh, some computer science, some electronic, some other mechanical, some other components, a digital environment, a digital system that support people in their daily life, in their daily activities in two ways, proactively and sensibly. And you already, Professor Corn already on Monday uh, show you the example of the insisting uh, friends that uh, uh, ask you always to be proactive and uh, not a lot uh, sensible. To realize for supporting people whose goal is supporting people, we can, in general, in this course, we blend the system and devices of different manufacturers, different technologies, different type of systems in present in a specific environment that you will choose during this, uh, this year for your project. And these systems and devices that speak different languages, they are composed by different uh, technologies, and there are hardware systems, software system, cyber physical system, and so on need typically a software to coordinate the action of each other. So each system, each device maybe already has a software inside for its working, for its daily operation, but to work together to coordinate the combined behavior, you need to add or to have another software, another software layer that uh, let this system and device to behave like one thing, like one organism. And this organism, we need to design the organism to be interactive with people, uh, supportive and sensible, like in the definition. So the goal of the software, this software layer, is well to coordinate uh, the various project system components well, to make them interactive, supportive, and sensible toward the goal, the main objective of the, of the system, and toward the, the user, the inhabitants of the environment. And it should have this software some requirement, requirements that we uh, choose for this course and for your project. So not only a software has this requirement, but also the programming language that we choose for this course should have this requirement. These four re requirements. One is focus on feature instead of uh, focusing on uh, specific uh, mm, approaches, mathematical idiosyncrasies, or low level details. But uh, a language and a software that is focused on features. Then can be uh, enabled as uh, to take all to face a design of a system that is in some way intelligent. Then well suitable to solve a real problem, a software and a programming language that is used not by three person in the world, 
but a lot of people with uh, components already existent so that you can have a lot of example and you can have uh, uh, other software, other libraries written in that language in which you can, can use for your own project. And they try to avoid limit some idiosyncrasies of certain programming language, uh, for example, uh, I don't know, for example, uh, pointers, pointers in C, we try to avoid pointers uh, for people that doesn't know the C programming language or something similar. So this, well, this language is, we choose three years ago, is Python, Python version two, there are two versions currently of Python, Python 2 and Python 3. They are not compatible, not totally compatible. We stick on Python 2, not Python 3, again, because there are, now there are more uh, libraries, more components, more tutorial uh, on Python 2 instead of Python 3. Python 3 is new, but is not yet uh, uh, fully supported by um, the community in the world. So there are a lot of more things for Python 2 than for Python 3. It should have Python as smooth learning. Python is most, mostly used, uh, for example, in the United States as an introductory language for computer science 101 courses. So introductory courses in computer science, they use Python here. We use C, they use Python, because it's, they said that it is much more easier to learn. And it avoids mostly a focus on mathematical abstraction, and it doesn't have a lot of a counterintuitive concept, it does not compile, and it has few low-level syntax issues, like, for example, pointers on something like that. Before speaking a little bit more about Python, um, one question and one observation. The observation, we start today with Python from zero to, I suppose, a complete set of feature, of basic feature, to give you an introduction to the language, a solid fundamental to build upon the language and this knowledge, and also we try to give you tools and a methodology for working all in three hours. And this is observation. The question is, just to, to know what to say and what to skip, how many of you have no experience, have seen, never see the C programming language? Five, okay, thank you. It's not a problem. Uh, we start from scratch from Python. I just use uh, uh, one example in two, in two slides. So Python, Python is an easy to learn, powerful programming language, is ideal for scripting, for creating uh, quick programs, and also for realize uh, prototype, rapid development of prototype, that is what we need mostly here. And it's suitable for many areas and most platforms. It works on Linux, on Windows, on Mac, on embedded systems, and used for simple programming, for data mining, for statistical analysis, for a lot of fields really different uh, each other, from each other. Well, it has a website that is this one, python.org. It uh, appeared in uh, 15 years ago. It was designed by Guido Van Rossum, Rossum, sorry. It's general purpose, so it works for the web, it works for command line system, it works for uh, various type of application. It's not focused on one specific uh, application. It's an high level language, it, and it has from the beginning, from the, by design, a great emphasis on code readability and conciseness. It's very readable and very concise as a language. Another question, two questions. Do you know the difference between, uh, how many of you know the difference between a high-level language and a low-level language? 
high level language, low level language, do you know the difference? Okay, the difference is. To the machine language. Okay. And faster. Okay. But it's more complex. For example, all level assembly. assembly. Okay. And high level language. Okay. And an example of a high level language, not Python, Java. Okay. We'll see. It's a high level language. And uh, okay. That is what he said. High level language near to human level abstraction, shorter than the other. It's portable. It's independent, of, mostly independent on the machine, but must be translated in a low level language for the actual execution of computer. For example, C or Java are high level language. This is the L word in C, just to, to have a, that is the minimum C program that you have to write a hello word, to print out hello word on the screen, the hello word sentence on the screen. Low level language are more near to machine code, more similar to machine code, are more efficient, are not portable, must be rewritten for specific platform, typically, typically, but they are directly executable like assembly. This is the, we can say the equivalent of the other L word program. This is low level and this is high level, okay? Just to have a picture. Uh, sorry, interpreted language versus compiled language, the difference? Difference between interpreted versus compiled, who know the difference? Only one? You don't know the difference between a compiler and interpreter? Really? Are you sure? An interpreted language is translated line by line. Python is translated line by line. A Python program for each line, each line go to a, through a interpreter, this is a software that is reside on your computer. To use Python, you need Python installed on your computer, otherwise it doesn't work. To use a Python program, not to write, to use a Python program. You need an interpreter, and each line of the Python program is interpreted at runtime, time, we can say, and the result is performed. A compiled language like C is instead compiled in an intermediate object, this, and then this object can be executed to provide the result. The main, one of the main difference is that if you wrote a program in C, you don't need the source code. You don't need to pass the source code to every computer, and you don't need to have the compiler to execute a C program. You need only the object code, the executable file, and on every, for example, Windows machine, the X file will produce, hopefully, the same result. In an interpreted language, you need to install Python to work with, to play, to run a Python program. This is, in two slides, the, the main difference. Well, Python is interpreted, and this, are, and this fact has one consequence, the consequence is that we can uh, work with Python in two ways, in an interactive mode and in a script mode. The script mode is more similar to the traditional compiled language mode. You write a source code and then you press run or the same compile this program. Here you interpret this program and you see the execution of the entire program. You write the code in a file that has extension dot pi, like here, and you then run the program. The interactive mode, that is a characteristic of um, typically interpreted uh, yeah, soft um, program, can be run from the, the common prompt on Windows or the terminal on Linux uh, Mac. If you brought Python, if you installed Python, and you brought Python, 
you, it prints something, and then it presents you with three uh, major signs. And you, here, you can write Python code. And each line is interpreted and is executed at the same time you wrote. So if I wrote one plus one, a really difficult uh, operation, it's say two. This is Python that performs the mathematical operation, and it's say two. You can also write more complex function and so on, but it's not really uh, practical to write here. But for quick um, example, like quick experiment, experiments is quite useful to understand what uh, happens. The other is the, the traditional way. You have a Python file, like a C file for uh, most of you, and you run this program. So, two words about how to install Python. Uh, Python is available for all major platform. On uh, Linux and Mac OS uh, X, uh, is typically pre-installed because it's already used by the operating system. Um, we will use Python 2, so please check if you have a Linux or Mac that there is installed Python 2. I show you how. Uh, under Windows, it should be explicitly installed. From the Python website, you can download the 2.7.11 version that is an executable. You double click on that and next, 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 finish, and you have Python uh, installed. To check if you have Python installed or if uh, what web version, you can on Windows open the, the command prompt like uh, this. And if you type here, if you type here Python minus minus version and press enter, you see Python, in this case, Python.2.7.11. That is the version of Python installed. If you give an error or something else, it's not good, then you need to reinstall Python or to check other things. But it should work in this way. We will not use Python in a terminal or in a command prompt. We'll, we'll, during the course, we'll typically have to, to put our, our hands on a terminal or a command prompt. But we will use an integrated development environment that is a software with a graphical interface that allow you to write code, but also to run code, to debug code, to auto-complete code. You start writing something, it suggests you um, the termination of such a word that you brought, uh, various build automation to tools, and so on. And we, sorry, and we will use uh, Linux in lab. In Ladispe, we will use, and the IDE and Python is installed under Ubuntu. So in lab, we don't use Windows, and we provide a solution for the exercises that we did in lab, that we will do in, the, in lab, only they works on Linux. They maybe can work on uh, Mac, they typically doesn't work at all or partially under Windows. Because we, in some, time, in some occasion, we will use some Linux um, libraries and some Linux executable that are not available identically under Windows. So just to, just to know. So on Monday, when we will go on Ladispe, we will, you will see Linux, Ubuntu, and on your desktop computer in the lab. The, back to the ID. The ID, there is some choices about the ID for Python. We will use uh, a commercial product for the first year this, uh, this year, that is JetBrain PyCharm, that is, well, a commercial product, so typically you must pay for the product, but uh, JetBrains provide a free license for students. You can, with this license, install all the JetBrains of computer. 
So you can install on your personal laptop, on the, if you have a desktop computer at home, and so on, without any problem. JetBrains, we will use PyCharm, the, the professional edition that you can download from here. And you can also install that, but before starting the, the ID, you must also register for the license. They required in apply now few information if you are a student or a teacher, because it works also for teachers, your name and the email address of your institution. So uh, polito.it address s id polito.it and you apply they give you an email you set a password and then you will use the, that password and the email address inserted here to enable for one year a jet pie charm on your computer the same license you must use the same license also on La Dispe computer. Because this license is personal, so for this year, we need to use the same credential to log in to enable the installed version of PyCharm on La Dispe computers. <coughs> we are working on a workaround, but not for, but not for this year. So to install PyCharm, you have to apply for a license, then download the PyCharm Professional Edition that is available from, for Linux, Mac, and Windows. And uh, on Windows and Mac, double click on the downloaded file. And on Windows, next, 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 finish. On Mac is a DMG, so you move the, the icon inside the <laughs> application folder. And on Linux, there is a compressed file that you have to unpack wherever you want to install the, the software. Then when you open PyCharm, for the first time you see one thing like this. You have to select not activation code or license server and neither evaluate for 30 days, but JetBrains account and you insert here your username or email and your password that set up on the JetBrains website and then press OK and click in the and the ID will start forever, we can say, for one year. And PyCharm will look like this, but it's better to open here. Maybe. I, my, my version is already registered. You, here, you can create a new project, open a new project, uh, and so on. So for example, if you, we want to create a new project, we have a list of different projects that PyCharm support. We are interested in pure Python project right now. And so here, you set the location and the folder in which uh, the, your project will be stored on your computer. The interpreter, the Python interpreter, they should have one Python interpreter, 2.7, and you press create. And this is basically what happens. Then you can create a new Python file with a name of your choice, and it creates a trial.py with an empty uh, text editor here where you can write whatever you want. And now we see whatever you want, what is. Okay, so first step with Python, how to install. Really half an hour. Next, let me move this here. Okay. 
So we start with Python. We, as I said before, we will start today and we will continue on Python next Thursday. But on Monday we will perform, you will perform some operation on Python in the lab. So let's start again from this. That most of you, apart five person, no. Okay, this is, we can say the minimum for a correct C program to print on the screen, hello world. In computer science, you know, we are, uh, we love the hello world uh, print uh, on the screen as the first exercise. So we start from here. This is typical for similar, in Java this, there you have something quite similar, not identical, obviously, to this. You have, in this case, you have the first line to our five, uh, the first line is, what is? What is the first line? C program. This include what, um, is the is the standard input output library and you include the standard input output library in your program. You need this because without this you cannot perform any input output operation. You cannot print on the screen without including this. Uh, almost all C program include the standard library, standard input output library. Then there is uh, this. This is, all this is, what's the name of these things? This is, okay, this is the button function and all this is a function. This is the main function. The main function is mandatory to run a C program. At least one file and a C, even a huge C program must have a main entry point. This function has a body, it starts with a braces, a brace, and ends with another brace. So the brace are indicator for this function. This function must return a number, an integer number, and this function did two things. One is print on screen, hello world, and the other is return the number zero. <coughs> to say, okay, the, the function, the program, terminate with success. Zero, in this case, is success. Okay, this is C. The equivalent, the minimum equivalent to print, how many of you know Python? Just to, okay. The minimum equivalent, sorry, the minimum equivalent in Python is this. Hmm? So we, we can notice three things at least that are really important. There are three things that are missing. What are these three things that are missing? Okay, the parentheses, okay, but no, but yes, yes are missing, but not is not one of the really important things now. Uh, one time, semicolon, yes. The, the instruction ends without a semicolon. In Python, no instruction ends with a semicolon. The one instruction ends with a new line. You press enter and the line is complete. Then, one thing is that. Then? D? Yes. Oh, okay, no, well, yes, <laughs> obviously. Uh, the printf here is print, then two bigger things than the f or the print. The main function is missing. Python can, there is something similar to a main. It's not a function, but there is in Python similar to a, something similar to a main, but you don't need a main to execute a Python program. It works. And then the other things you don't have to include the standard input output libraries. The standard input output libraries is already included by default. 
you can print on screen and you can take uh, input without including anything. So let, let's try if it's true. I start the, um, you see this thing, yes. We start an interactive mode and we try print hello world. And well, it prints hello world. And if I take this line and I put in PyCharm in this file, <coughs> oh, maybe, maybe it's better. Hello world, and we run, wait, we don't run. Okay, try again. And we, And we run this. And we run trial. You see here, hopefully, hello world. It's a little bit small, but. Okay. You should see here, hello world. So this is a complete Python program with one line of code. That's not really difficult, but okay. Let's add a, a, a little thing. If when if you would add the comment that is an explanation of what uh, this line did, we can add this inline single line comment in this way: the hash symbol and then a sentence in plain English or plain Italian or plain whatever you want. This is a comment, it will be skipped by the interpreter and it will print hello world again. So there are then some keywords that are reserved word for Python and you don't have to, to learn all of these. Uh, most are typical of, of uh, programming language, but print, you see print here, print is not in Python 2 a function is because this is the reason why we don't have the parentheses here. Because this is not a function. This is a statement in Python, in Python 2. In Python 3, it, it will become a function. But now, it's not a function, so it doesn't have parentheses. And you also notice that, that is much more concise than C and also readable, printable word. There is not print F or main or something like that. It's much more readable than a C file, a C source code. Well, variable. We need to not only to print things on the screen, but also to create temporary objects to store our information. And these temporary objects are Variables, variables in Python are defined this way. A name, an equal, and what we want to put in the variable. Notice that two things. One, we don't indicate a type. In C you wrote, okay, in Java you wrote string language equal Python. In C you wrote char uh, brackets, 10 language equal Python. We, here, we don't have a type. Python is dynamically typed as a language. It tries to understand what is the type of this object to put here. And you can change the type of the object in the variable as you wrote code. So now this is Python, in the next line you can wrote five as a number and it's perfectly okay. The type of the variable changes. So this is a string, 
a set of letters or a set of words with spaces and whatever is a string. And the variable, when it's compound by more than one word, is put together by an underscore. So all lower, one word, underscore, another word. Join language name is joined lower, with the underscore in the middle. This is by convention in Python. All the variable in Python should be written in this way. Not capital letter in the middle, but not space, spaces, not a strange thing, not minus, but a word, underscore, another word. So variables, we have some types of variables also in Python. We have string, like this. We have also, sorry, this, that is another type of string. In Python, you can brought string with a single quote or with a double quote. You have integer, that is number, and you have Boolean with two on false. You can check what type is uh, uh, included, is understood by the, the interpreter with a function, if you want, that is type. So if we, again, type or no? Just try again. If we create a variable here, and we call it, uh, and we put it a string, And we put it in a string, hello, and then we type type of a variable. But we see that this is of type str, that is string. If in variable we put uh, five, and then we again type type of variable, Python say that this variable is now type int. Try again with my charm, the, the full screen. No? Okay. So we see another example of this type. I close, um, okay. When you close PyCharm, uh, it doesn't close the current project. You need to close the project if you want to open another project. And then in this list, you see all the open project. And another amazing thing of PyCharm is that if you delete the one project from here, it does not, uh, it is not deleted on the disk, so the, the untitled is still here. So if you want to delete the project, you need to really delete from this list and from the, the, your computer. But uh, maybe one time, uh, one day they solved it. And I prepared this for cases for playing with type. So the first, we have a variable, the same variable for time. The first time it contains a string, so if we print the type of this variable, it should be string as before, and then we print uh, the real content of variable. Then we change this variable in uh, uh, one, two, three, four, and we print the type and uh, the content. Then again, we change the floating point number, one, dot, two, three, and again as before, and then we try with another integer, but written in a strange way with a zero, starting with a zero, and then we print the, the type and the variable. If we run this, we see that, well, okay, the first one is hello world and is a string, as expected. The second is one, two, three, four, and is an integer, as expected. The third is one, dot, two, three, and is a floating point, a float, 
as expected. And the, first one, the fourth one is an integer, okay? But it doesn't print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but it prints 6, 6, 8. Why print 6, 6, 8? It's written 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Ideas? Suggestion? Solution? The problem is this zero here, obviously. If I remove the zero, it prints one, two, three, four. It prints six, six, eight. Uh -uh. Yes, and what basis is? No. Uh, a suggestion, if I wrote right here nine, it give me an error. Okay, it's an octal. With number with zero, sorry, also eight, obviously. Numbers with, uh, that start with zero will be interpreted by Python as octal number. So pay attention if you want to wrote zero dot something and you forgot the dot or delete the dot, then the number will be totally different from zero dot one to six six eight. That is totally different number. Okay, again on string. I said to you that uh, these are two ways to wrote a string in Python. One with double quotes. Here start with a double quotes. There is something in the middle and then another double quotes. And here another, a single quote. There is something in the middle and another single quote. So if I, again, try to print, this is a string, no, sorry, I am a string, otherwise that doesn't work, I am a string, it works, double quotes, I am a string, it works. If I wrote single quotes, I am a string, How many of you say that it works? If I press enter, it works or no? No. Right. It doesn't work, why? It said uh, invalid syntax, why? Because of because Python look for this and say, okay, then there is a string, then there is a letter, and it's okay, it's a string, and then there is a, double, a single quote. Again, so the string ends. So all these should not be there for Python. And so this is an error. To avoid this problem, the same happens here if you use a double quote inside a string. Uh, for example, um, Professor Korn on Monday said, colon, open, quote, something. This is a double, double quote, so it does a problem. To solve, we can, well, or write this string in this other way, or we can escape the single quote with, well, the, the escape operator, the backslash. So we can escape the single quote, we can escape the double quote if needed, we can escape the escape uh, charter, so the backslash. With this, in this way, Python look for this, and it's okay, it's a single quote, then there is a letter, it's perfect, then there is a, an escape sequence, so here starts an escape sequence. The escape sequence is a single quote, so the single quote is escaped, is not, a termination of a string, and then there are a lot of letters, and finally, 
uh, another single quote. And in this way, if you trust me, otherwise, in this way it works and prints I am a string. So in Python, we have two way of writing uh, strings. They are equivalent. Uh, the suggestion, the convention is choose one and stick with it. If you prefer the double quote, use the double quote. If you prefer the single quote, use a single quote. But doesn't mix in the same program, simple single quotes with double quotes. Choose one of them and stick with them. We did it. Is it possible to wrote also longer string, string that span multiple line? So in this case is I am a long string, new line, I span over two lines. Or I am another long strings, new line, I span over two lines, new line, and so on. And this longer string that span over multiple lines are started and ended by triple double quote or triple single quote. It's again, as before, they are equivalent, they suffer of the same problem of the normal strings, and as before, choose one of them and stick with it. Then, a simple if statement. If a condition is valid, then do something. We have here two variables, people, 20 people, and 30 cats. And we say two things. If, that is a statement, people is minor than the number of cats, then print, we are doomed. So we notice, we should notice here, again, something different with respect to, for example, C. We notice that there are no braces. In C, you, have a, you should have, or in Java, you should have a braces here. This is a braces. And another here. And again here. Another braces here. And that indicates the starting point of the statement and the end point of the statement of the block and the end point of the block. In Python, you don't have, we don't have, never use a braces. Python doesn't use a brace. A statement is typically composed by a keyword, a colon at the end of the statement, except print, but if is in this way, for is in this way, while is in this way, and then, it is based on indentation. Things belong to the same block of code if they are identically indented. So, so everything that is indented here under this if belongs to this if. If we remove the indentation, like in this case, is a new block, is a new statement, is something new. No braces, but indentation is mandatory and is essential. If you draw, if you in, indentate in a, a wrong way, the program doesn't work. Typically in Python, the indentation is four spaces not a tab, not three spaces, not six spaces, four spaces. PyCharm is configured by default to add the four spaces when you press the tab key. If you press the tab key, it go right of four spaces. You can go down for four spaces with the arrow key. If you, you cannot mix various type of indentation. If you use one time four spaces, one time tab one time five spaces, even if they seem at the same distance, the Python interpreter know that and it give you an error. So it's, it's really precise in this. It's really concise, but precise in this operation. The if statement, well, is there is, as I said before, 
the if key the property uh, condition in the in the, in the middle. The, the same operator that we already know, minor, major, equal, and or works all, also in Python, the same identical way. In this case, what we did, we did, well, if people is, that is 20, is minor or cats, print this, then the interpreter check another time if people is major or cats, then print these other things. In this case, the interpreter will print this first sentence because people is 20 and cats and 30, but uh, evaluate also this one because they are two separate blocks. There is a way, obviously, to compact this, uh, this operation, and, the, and this way is the elsif keyword that in Python is called elif. It loses uh, two letters. It's only elif. If people is minor than cats, print, uh, we are doomed. Elif, people is major, is greater than cats, print, we are safe. Else, in the other case, in which people is equal to cats, print, we can decide. In this way, the interpreter evaluates this condition, this condition is true, and then the other two conditions are not evaluated, because it, it go here. Well, as I said before, comparator and a Boolean operator exist. There is the equal, there is the not, the and, the or, the false, the true, and so on. So for example, if we want to print this sentence, two is equal to one, two is equal to one, uh, true or false? Two is equal to one? Ah, oh, okay. String written with a single quote or string written with a double quote. They are equal or not? Yes or not? Yes. Not false is, this is, was uh, easy. Um, this other two equal is equal to one and true is false. And the last one is true. Good. Then, back to the string. Charter. You see here another time in which Python is much more readable than other. For charter in hello, print charter. If you read this sentence in English, in plainly English, you probably say something like that. You probably say for each charter in the hello string print the single charter. That is much more similar here than not for e equal to zero, e minor than hello dot len, and so on, or len of hello in, in C, for example. If we did this operation, this is another operator, this is the for loop. There is the keyword that is for, there is the colon as before, this is the indentation for spaces as before, and then there is this in keyword. This is the only for loop that there is present in Python. The equivalent of for e equal to zero, i equal to zero is not present in Python. This is the only for. For in, for something in another thing, then do something else. And this And this operation will print every single charter of hello in, uh, in the terminal, the H, the E, the double L, and the O, one line after other. We can obviously take a string and look for a single charter, access to a single charter by its index, that is this one, this is the index, one of the, the string that is, uh, this is uh, zero, this is uh, one, this is uh, two, and so on. So this print, say hello, will print uh, the E. Okay, so we can access to a single charter in a string 
But uh, let me take this. So if we print uh, the type of this single charter, we notice the Python. We say that this single charter, the E letter, is a string. Python does not have a charter type. The minimum type is a string. A single letter is a string. Three words are a string. Well, string can be combined in several ways. For example, here we have two strings, this, as before, Python and the version, the Python version, 2.7.11. And we can combine this string with, the, for example, the concatenation that is a plus operator. We have the language name string, this is Python, and we can concatenate this string with this other string. And we obtain one word that is Python 2.7.11 without spaces, the exact concatenation of this two string. The same works also not only with uh, variables, but also with print, in which we can say my space plus another string, and it will print my name. Not only the plus is available on Python, but also the multiplier. You can multiply a string for a number, not a string for a string. And the result is that the string is well multiplied three times. So Python multiply three is Python, Python, Python. So, uh, I'm sorry, Python. Multiply three is Python, Python, Python. More complex string, multiply a number is the string repeated this number of time. And this, well, is a repetition. No other mathematical operation can be applied to string. You cannot divide a string by a number or subtract a string by another string in this way, in this specific way. Only plus and the asterisk works with the string. These work with string and number, not string and string. Obviously, it works number, multiply a number. And this work, we'll see in a minute, only between string. You cannot concatenate a string with something else. Not a number, not a, a Boolean or whatever only between two strings, or with, between two numbers, but it's easier. In Python, there are several ways to building complex string, so string that are composed by number, text, boolean, object of various type. This is one way. We have two variables, a that is equal to three, and b that is equal to five, that are numbers, integer and we want to print three times five is 15, and we want to print this not by writing three times five is 15, by using, but using A and B, so that we can change this variable and uh, the line continues to work. So one way to do this in Python is this. Print A comma times comma B comma is comma, and the operation that uh, is not correct, sorry, it's A or B. Okay. And this is a mathematical operation that works because uh, these are two integer and they can be multiplied. This, however, works only with print. You cannot use this, this piece and put it in a variable. You can only print it on the screen. And it print it, let me do this. Um, print three times, well, uh, five, 
and it prints three, space, time, space, five. Even if I don't add a space here, the comma add a space by default. But these work only in the print. If I create a variable, A, and I put inside three times five, it works, but I print A, it print this thing here, not three times five. It prints parentheses three, comma, times, with a single quote, comma, five, close parentheses. That is not the same that we did, with, uh, we know, we want. So, this is good, but it's for only works for print. Well, well yes. Um, I'll tell you in 10 minutes. Okay. This is a tuple. It's called a tuple. But, uh, um, so another way in which we can uh, build a complex string is by using the concatenator operator that we see before. I, I already said that the, it doesn't work between string and numbers. So if you try to wrote this, uh, it's a type error unsupported operand type because I try to add a number and a string or a string and a number. So it doesn't work. If we really want to use this plus operator, we can use this method, this function, str. In Python, there are several functions that are named as the uh, type string str integer int that are able to convert a string into an integer, an integer into a string, and so on. So in this way, a is um, an integer, and the string function is able to convert the tree number in the tree string. The same happens for b and for the mathematical operation. And if we have a tree inside a, a quote, so as a string, we can use the int function to convert in, into an integer. So string, string of five is five, notice the single quote, that is a string. If we wrote int of between double quotes, for example, five, is five as a number. If we store this in a variable, the first one will be of type string, the second one will be of type int. If we try, obviously, to perform a conversion of a hello in an integer, it's said invalid literal for int in base 10, because it's not able to convert hello in base 10 in a number. Another way, again, to do this is uh, similar to the, to the C way of doing, that is interpolation with uh, specifier. So we have uh, this time, this is A, this A is linked to this specifier, this B, is linked to this other specifier, and the third one, in order, is linked to this third one. That is the multiplication. <laughs> these are spe specifier. They exist three types of specifier. This is a number, integer number, uh, format number specifier, since A and B are specifier. There is the string specifier to print a string in case of A or B will be a string, and these are raw representation specifier. When we don't know what type is this, or if we have a structure with either a number or a string inside, we want to print independently to the type, to the specific type. 
This, as I said before, this parenthesis and the set, infinite set of uh, variables or number or strings or whatever is called the tuple. A tuple is um, a way to collect, is a specific type in Python, and is a way to collect similar objects, objects that are conceptually similar, conceptually um, linked one another. It's only a way to represent things together. Okay. Specifiers. So I have another example here. Okay, there is this joke, this is a, a very old joke. We have a variable x, there are type of people, that is 10 type of people, one on, only one um, element in this specifier. Then we have the, the variable binary with, uh, that contains binary, the variable do not that contains don't, and the variable way that contains this other sentence with binary that is a string, and do not that is another string, and then there is the string specifier here. Then we can print the joke, so the x, the x sentence and the y sentence. And then we print again the, the joke, but using one time the row representation specifier, and the other time the string representation specifier. So these are two string, both are string, this is a string and this is another string. And we print here not as a string, but as a row representation. And then there is another piece of this joke that asks if this, the joke is fun. And, and then it passes this variable inside this representation. So you can also split up the, the specifier and its variable. If we run this, we said there are there are I know the joke. So there are one zero type of people, those who know binary and those who don't. And this is string. This is printed with the string specifier. So you see it's perfect, like the print hello world. And then I print with I said the first sentence with a raw representation. You see what happens? Happens that with a raw representation, this is the first line is a string. So in the raw representation, it is represented as a string. So with the first with a single quote at the beginning, at the end. In my program, I don't have the single quote here. The single quote are inherited from the specific representation, that is the raw representation. The other, I also said, that prints out the other sentence, but as a string, doesn't not have the single quote at the beginning. And we also print this false, this false is a variable, printed again as a raw representation, but this false is a Boolean, so it's not a number, it's not a string, so the raw representation prints out correctly the false keyword. Then there is another type of way of interpolate string that is newer and better, we can say, than the other, that is this one. The sentence, the string, with these open and close braces, each of these open and close braces is linked to the parameter, this format function. So this first A is this, this the B is the second couple of braces, and the third is a third couple of braces. With this format, you can also invert the representation. So here, without writing nothing, is like saying 
zero, one, and two. So the, the first element, the A, is to be put here, the B is to be put here, and the A multiply B is to be put here. But you can also, so writing these or these is equivalent, but you can also say this. This put the B here, the A here, and the multiply here. You can also swap, change the order of this element without really changing this order, only by setting the right number here. This is a new format, this is also in Python 3, and this is the, the new way of doing string interpolation in Python that is compatible with Python 2. Then, again, on, on strings. I think it contains a law, or, or better, it should be containing a law. It contains Helco. And so I would like to fix this. We know that uh, we can access to a string with an index. So the third element of the index is the key, and so we I would like to replace the, this letter with the L. If I do this, Python said type error, because string in Python are immutable. You cannot change an existing string. You cannot change one letter of the string. You have to redefine the entire variable or in a program, go up and delete the wrong letter, but just to take uh, the message. Then there are a lot of other possible operations that are allowed on string. You can say, okay, what is the length of the string? Is four charter, six, 11, 100, and so on. I don't put this in the slide intentionally, because there is something that you will need to, to learn and we, that you will do a lot during this course, that is read the documentation, so we start uh, now. This is the, document, the official documentation of Python. Okay, not this documentation, in general the documentation in, during this course. And for example, if we know to know um, string methods, they are not here. In the library reference, in the string service, for example, string function, okay, a string can be, for example, put all capital letter, um, translate, then there are some deprecated function, then we can capitalize the first letter of a string, uh, find a charter inside a string, know the index of a charter inside a string or a word inside a string. And this is and this is the no. And this is the common way to which information are presented in uh, the documentation of Python. There is the definition, the name of the, the function, what it uh, accept and a brief description. In some cases, there is also an uh, example. This is the, okay. This is the, this was the library reference, then there is a language reference, and also a series of tutorial to getting started with pattern. Invoking the interpreter, the, uh, interactive mode, the script mode, and so on. So 
last thing for today. We see how to compose a string, we see how to print out a string. Now, briefly, we see how to get an input from the user. To get an input for the user, Python has a row. Python has a row underscore input function. This row underscore input function uh, wait on the terminal, on the program for input by the user. Then you wrote something and press enter, and it store what you what you type in a variable that in this case is named age, and then you can print age because the row input by default give you a string. So even if you here, how old are you? You put a number, it converts automatically this number in a string. So you can print out with concatenation. If we want not a string, but a number, because you have to perform some calculation about your ages, you have to use the int function, as I said before, that convert a valid number, a valid integer, in a real integer. So it converts a string, for example, the 20, that is not my age, not anymore, the 20 um, string in the 20 number without the quote. Okay. This is not, okay, and another, okay. Um, another way to use the raw input uh, function is to, in this case, we print uh, this sentence, how old are you, and then we said, okay, now after the sentence, give me your age. Another way to do this is to put the question, the sentence inside the raw input function. <coughs> It's totally equivalent. In this case, you don't use a print. You save a print from, uh, from the code, and you put the question directly inside the function. So for today, I stop here. I will tell you only one other thing. Well, slides are already on the on the websites, there are all slides on Python, not only what I did today, but also um, what they hopefully will do on Thursday. And then I would like to show you this section that is named Readings and Papers, in which there is a list of links and uh, papers, books, and whatever, uh, in four, three, <coughs> Um, aspects. There are two articles about ambient intelligence in general, definition, scenarios, example, and so on. There are a lot of tutorial books and classes about Python. The first one is a book, but is freely accessible online. And the second is the official Python tutorial that we see now. The, the, these other two are other two books, free online. Uh, legally, free online, and this Google Python class is a brief Python class uh, realized by Google. And the, the, the last one is a book that is not free, legally free online, available online. Then there are three books for getting started with Raspberry Pi, if you are interested, and uh, a collection of uh, shortcut and a reference for using the Linux terminal. If you are interested and you don't know how to use the terminal, uh, you don't have to buy all this book. You don't have to buy all this book. Uh, they are here as a reference if you want to retrieve that in some way. Most of them are free, so it's a, it's a good starting point. So 
I conclude here. We will see on Monday in La Dispe, and after you have one hour and a half in room 4D with Professor Corno. Have a good uh, evening.